This episode is brought to you by PentesterAcademy.com, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Be sure to check out our latest attack defense gadgets on HackerArsenal.com. Hey guys, I'm sitting down here with Dr. Christoph Parr. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So is this your first time at Hardware.io? Yeah, it's actually, it embarrassingly, it's my first time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, how did you get involved with the conference? What made you want to join in? Um, I got invited, but uh, honestly, this, this area, hardware security, has been my topic for more than 20 years. So it seems like a great fit for my interest, and it's an excellent crowd here. Okay. And so what do you do for a living right now? Well, I'm both in academia, and I've been working, as I mentioned before, in, in hardware security since 95, when I taught in, in Massachusetts in the last... 15 years I'm splitting my time between Germany and also UMass Amherst. So I'm doing a lot of um, research in hardware security. Um, and this is kind of my academic life. And there's a parallel university in, in, in my life, which is um, working with industry. Okay. And I started in uh, 2003, so almost 15 years ago, we started the first consultancy in car security. So which is, a, again, it's a great being here. And uh, what does a typical day look like for you, if you have a typical day? <laughs> I don't, but I could, could make up one. Right? So, yeah. um, well, you know, I, I commute, commute to my university, lo lots of email with everybody, and then um, meeting with my graduate students, you know, working on research topics, but a lot of research management, because right now, with, similar to with, with my colleagues in the US, we, we are almost flooded by money right now because IT security has become a really sexy topic, right? Mm -hmm. Which means a lot of public money going around. You know, everybody wants to have their own security research center. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, of industry money going around. You know, every company wants to have their mm -hmm. favorite industry labs that's mm -hmm. associated with some strong research group. Yeah. So, and, you know, it's really fun to do, but it's, it's a lot of red tape and a lot of organizational type of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. And I'm uh, also looking, uh, spending quite a bit of time in um, helping out with uh, spin-off companies, which is another hot topic right now. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. And what made you want to get into cybersecurity in the first place? That's an excellent question because I did get my PhD more than 20 years ago on coding, which turned out to be, I thought, not a very interesting topic for me. Mm -hmm. So I think I wrote a decent average PhD thesis, but never my heart really, you know, bet. It? Yeah, yeah. there was some... Uh, and um, I did, during my PhD in the early 1990s, I, I had contacts with, with IT security, which was a really new, new topic back then. And then when I finished my PhD, I said, I, I want to get into that. So I'm, I'm really, my, my heart is in, in, in IT security. And yeah, and I um, started teaching at uh, WPI in Massachusetts and I st in 95. And I started um, essentially January 1st, my first day, I started uh, getting in, into crypto and cybersecurity. Yeah. Nice. And you've been loving it ever since then? Yeah, ever since, yeah. You know, I've wrote one of the, the important textbooks in our field and it's really great. So it's, it's really something I identify myself with. So it's great. That's incredible. And so I, now, I know that you just had a talk. Yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about your talk and what were some of the highlights of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're looking in from... I always distinguish between my, my, my commercial work, which is, you know, current industry needs and then I look at, at research, you know, which is more like far reaching, you know, maybe five or 10 year horizon type of research. And what we're doing right now, we look at um, hardware Trojan, which is a little bit uh, spy novel type of stuff, you know, what, what would bad people like foreign intelligence agencies do if they could actually manipulate the hardware in a car or in a consumer device or in a laptop. Mm -hmm. Um, which is largely unexplored area, which is interesting. So, and uh, I think it really makes beautiful research. So it's really fun to work on. And I think it's also important. You know, we we, we just heard about the U.S. elections. What what people go through to manipulate that, right? Um, and this is more like Facebookish type of attacks, right? As you know, we read in the New York Times yesterday. But um, nevertheless, um, we could also imagine that the state sponsored actors who really manipulate the underlying hardware and cars maybe or in critical infrastructure so you know like the smart grid mm -hmm. this is really scary stuff and i think yeah. people do have to work on that yeah. that's incredible and so what what do you find most interesting one of the most interesting things about the cybersecurity field well what, me personally because my yeah. background is engineering with a little unusual a lot of, lot of uh, cs people i really love this interaction between hardware and cybersecurity yeah. 
you know, the Lexus cryptography, this math type of thing. But then we look at cars, you know, like yeah. everyday real hardware devices that you can touch. Mm -hmm. and I think it's really fascinating. And they're all kind of fascinated, you know, with like um, energy consumption, low power crypto, you know, attacks mm -hmm. against hardware. Yesterday, there wasn't a fascinating talk by a, a colleague of mine who looked in medical implants, right? Insulin yeah. pumps, right? So all of that, I think, is really cool, you know, breaking the boundaries from, you know, just the cyberspace, this is virtual. Uh -huh. But then we suddenly in the real world, right? We have medical implants, right? You, you can't become more, more, mm -hmm. more physical and real world and body-like, right? And human-like. I think this is great. Yeah, it's never been more integrated into our everyday life, exactly. I guess. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's this notion of IoT, right? Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. But now we get into the body, right? This is really cool. Yeah. And uh, as an expert, you know, what's your advice for someone if, if they really just want to get started into this field? What is What would you say is the best advice if they want to get into this yeah, field? Yeah. I'm somewhat reluctant as a professor, but it does help to have a technical degree, right? It can, yeah. it can e either be computer science, it can be... Um, they call the U.S. computer engineering. That means computer hardware. Mm -hmm. It's basically electrical engineering, but with a CS kind of slant to it, okay. right? To start with, with that, you know, try to get an undergraduate degree on that, and um, you know, try to get practice. You know, maybe internships with security companies. Try to look into hacking, and then maybe get a graduate degree. This is right now really a, a cool way of doing that. And, and you know, we in particular in the U.S. we, we, we are in, in desperate need for graduate students who want to get into that stuff, and that's. That's essentially what happened to me after my PhD, right? Yeah. I found it really fascinating, and I, I would have laughed if there was a graduate yeah. offerings in that area back then. So if, if you're really serious about it, try to do that. Yeah, and would you say that there's a bit of a job gap right now in the cybersecurity community? Yeah, this is a total understatement, what yeah, you said. It. Yeah, I mean, I work with U.S. companies, and they say it's impossible to find hardware security engineers period, right? And this is for historical reasons. There's, um, it's somewhat stronger in Europe, so there are a lot of stronger groups here, and they, they try to grab you know, the graduates from, from Europe, and it's, it's really hard to get. And European companies essentially have the same, same situation. So, and I don't think this is going to change anytime soon. Really? Yeah, yeah. And now, you know, given all your years of experience and everything you've seen, what do you think is one of the biggest growing threats in the cybersecurity community yeah. today? It's somewhat similar to what I mentioned before. It's really this interaction with physical systems, you know, hardware, cars, insulin pumps, yeah. and, and cybersecurity, you know, the networks. It's not very well understood to, you know, make a long, long story short. And there's a lot of really bad things can happen. And um, if you have really determined attacker, it's really hard to defend against that. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Christoph Parr, thank you so much for sitting yeah. down. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. Great. This episode was brought to you by Pen Tester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets.